Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Millicent Rovello, and I am here today with my amazing, amazing, amazing co-host, Dr. Jay Calvert. How are you? I am doing very well, and I am very excited for today's topic because it's one that is near and dear to your heart. <laughs> It's true. Today we are talking about mommy makeovers. This is part of our 101 series, so it's a kind of brief overview of what goes into a mommy makeover. But I am very excited to talk about it because I've kind of been on a mommy makeover tear for the past month, and so it's fresh on my mind. So is this a mommy makeover, or is this a makeover done by a mommy? Yes and yes, all of the above, <laughs> which is different than a daddy do-over. That's right. Which would be what you would do. <laughs> Boy, and I've had to do some of those. I'm just saying. But uh, yeah, I mean, the mommy makeover is key. I, I, I actually do mommy makeovers myself. We both do. Of course. Because it's part got, of plastic it's, surgery. Yeah, it's the yeah. deal. I mean, come on. So what's for the 101 series that we are doing, mommy makeover 101, definition of a mommy makeover from your standpoint? Um, mommy makeover is typically done for a mommy, so someone that's ideally completed their childbearing. They've had their one, two, three, four, five kids. They're not planning on having any more. Settle down with that five. <laughs> <right? laughs> you know, let's, let's hold it some, I had me. one who had six a few weeks ago. <laughs> so sometimes there's numerous kids. Yes. Um, but they've had X amount of children, and they're done with childbearing, and now they are coming to reconstruct and rejuvenate all the damage that is done by those little, adorable, sucking piranhas that we call our children. <laughs> <laughs> So kids, <laughs> so kids, this is your fault. Yes, <laughs> and it, there's no set list of procedures that constitute a mommy makeover, but typically it involves doing something for the breasts. So that can be as simple as a breast lift. It can be a breast lift with implants. It can be implants alone. It can be breast lift with fat grafting. Something to rejuvenate the breasts that have taken a beating with pregnancy and childbirth. And then typically something to rejuvenate the abdomen, which obviously also takes a beating with pregnancy and childbirth. And then there are some other things that can be thrown in, you know, if it bothers them, liposuction of the legs, a labiaplasty, other things can be thrown into the mix. But typically it has, think it has a combination of procedures for the breast and the abdomen. Yeah, that's, that's how I think of it. It's, you know, we're going to take care of the things that are typically, you know, need, need a little... Uh, a little perking up after little, the babies. A little TLC for yes. all of the hard work that they did. For sure. And abdomen and breasts are the, the focus of a mommy makeover. Um, yeah, the labiaplasty does does kind of play in a lot of times because right. you're there. and You're uh, already there. You're looking right at it. The labia itself don't necessarily change much with pregnancy and childbirth, but they can. And sometimes when things get torn or sutured back together, they're not always done in the right way. Or maybe it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm already here doing all this work. Right. Why don't you fix this? Well, with the 97% uh, C-section rate in Newport Beach, that's, that's a joke. It's not. <laughs> it's it's, it's not like that. 92%. It, <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. It's 95%. No, the, uh, they, there's such a high C-section rate that... Uh, that Things that's, don't get th yeah, torn kinda, as it's, much. And I, that may be by design, but I think the OBGYNs just like to do... They like to be super, super duper conservative. So like C-sections happen way more than natural natural vaginal births in sort of the population I see anyway. Right. And it's just, you know, it's the population we have. It's it's doctors who want better control of their schedule. It's patients who want control yeah, of do. their schedule. Like, I don't have time to go, am I having a baby right now or am I not? Like, September 12th, I'm going in, I'm having this baby. <laughs> I can work up to September 11th. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, there's a control factor to it. But the C-sections themselves can also cause some problems. Yes. So that scar doesn't always heal well. You may have a little flap of skin that hangs over it. And so that's why patients will come in asking for a C-scar revision but some c-section yeah section scar revision but sometimes what they really need is a mini tummy tuck or a full-blown tummy tuck definitely part of the mommy makeover so how do you so let's say your patient comes in it says on the schedule you know mommy makeover how do you approach that consultation so the first thing i get is a thorough history you know how many children have you had how long ago was the last child? We don't want to be doing surgery three months after they just gave birth and they're still breastfeeding and leaking milk no, everywhere. That's no good. Like all of that needs to be done. You need to be done having kids because you don't want to have all of the surgery and then get pregnant again and undo all the hard work. 
So done having children, ideally being done with breastfeeding for at least three to six months because you got to give the breast time to sort of involute, go back to the size that they're going to be, let the skin do whatever it's going to do. And then we talk about what's bothering them. And usually it's that combination of breasts and abdomen. And then we make a plan based on whatever it is that they want. Typically for the breasts, if they've had pregnancy, you know, even more than one pregnancy, if they've had any kind of breastfeeding, the breasts do this thing during pregnancy and breastfeeding where they engorge and they get really swollen and large. And then as that milk goes away and the breast size comes down, they actually lose volume. And so the oh yeah. breast volume is now gone and the skin is stretched out. And so they may have gone from having perky, youthful looking breasts to having sort of these sad, deflated breasts that they don't recognize anymore. Then they frequently want to have sad. those <laughs> breasts back. They are, it's very sad Aww. for everyone. <laughs> like, I just, I want them back up here, like where they were. Mm. And sometimes that can be accomplished with just a simple lift. Sometimes it's just a simple implant. If they're small volume, then they don't have a lot of loose skin. But frequently it requires a lift plus an implant or a lift plus fat grafting to restore the volume that they lost. Yeah, and, and it is about rejuvenation. This is not just like, you know, come in and get some breast implants in, although that can be the case. But really we're talking about rejuvenation of the breast because right. the, the process of being pregnant and having, e e even if you don't go to term and have children, the, the breasts go through it. They go through the changes. They do. Yeah. And and so the breasts really can, they can get uh, post, you know, post-pregnancy, I should say, uh, involution of the breast mm -hmm. tissue. Uh, you can get it, obviously, even without breastfeeding. And the, the, the breast tissue can shrink and get less robust and less perky. Yep. Yep. All of the above. I had a patient... Um, last year, who unfortunately her pregnancy didn't go to term. She got to maybe, I don't know, four, five, six months, but her breast got very large. And in fact, the photos she showed me of what she wanted her breast to look like were the photos of her breast during that pregnancy term. And I see that pretty commonly. Patients were like, I really loved how my breast looked when I was breastfeeding and they show me a photo. Can you make me look like this? Totally. That, yeah. I, that has happened <laughs> many times in my practice where they're like, this was me. In yeah. Like six months, like, can you do this? I was like, well, yeah, you know, we can, we can we, get we, you back we'll, there. We'll get you there. You know, yeah. you're going to need a little implant, going to need a little lift, maybe some scars that you didn't have to get there. But, and that's the thing is the, the scars of mastopexies of breast lifts always sort of come up as a topic of, yep. you know, it's a bone of contention with, you know, especially in Southern California. I don't know about the rest of the country, but our fellow Dave Stepien says that the periareolar lift is like, the, he calls it the California breast tattoo. <laughs> he goes, it's just, it, nobody else does that. Everybody else, you're getting an anchor scar, that's that. Stop talking to me about the periareolar. And that is something that is really common here in Southern California for some reason. It's true. Well, we're just more used to showing off our bare breasts, I think, in general. And people don't want to have visible scars on their breasts. They don't. And I'm, I'm, you're maybe more accommodating than I am. I'm kind of like, yeah, well, if you want the breast to look pretty, that's what I got to do for you. And you're going to like it. So you're welcome. Uh, because it's true. Like those scars, the vertical scar plus minus the one that goes underneath the breast, <clears throat> the horizontal scar. If you have a lot of skin, they're very necessary to reshape the breast and get rid of the extra skin. Um, frequently for a patient that's had children, that's breastfed, a periareolar scar where you hide the incision just around the borders of the areola, probably not going to cut it unless they were pretty small-breasted to start out with. But we do have a whole mastopexy uh, podcast, so go back and take a listen to the, the scar Don't discussion. Don't we have a We Hate the Periareolar Scar <laughs> we do. Uh, we do have that. podcast also? And then I think we both went on and did periareolar mastopexies like the next day. I think we did. <laughs> it, it's... I don't know what that is, but anyway, back to mommy makeovers. So you're going to deal with the breasts. You're going to do fat grafting, lifts, implants, whatever it takes to make them look beautiful. Abdomen, same thing, right? We are going to go from the, you're going to run the gamut from you need some liposuction to you need a full on abdominoplasty and everything in between. Correct. And it, that is the gamut. Um, typically it is a, an actual abdominoplasty. Yes. So that's an incision, you know, kind of hip to hip right in the front, big smile, and then you tighten up those stomach muscles. Not uncommonly, those rectus muscles, your six-pack muscles, have been affected by pregnancy, especially if you are narrow-framed and you had a large baby or maybe in a twin gestation. 
you ever seen those pregnant women that you can't tell they're pregnant from behind, then you see them from the side and they look <laughs> like torpedoes? Yep. Yeah, their rectus muscles have taken a beating and frequently need to be repositioned and put back together. And that's part of a traditional tummy tuck combined with however much lipo they need based on however much fat they still have left. That's sort of the classic tummy tuck scenario. You have mini tummy tucks. There is a mini tummy tuck podcast, mini tummy tuck, mini results. It's like a C-scar revision is what it is. It is. You're otherwise a fit, you know, skinny person. Your muscles haven't really been affected too much. You just have a little bit of skin that hangs over your C-section scar. You're a candidate for a mini tummy tuck. Other than that, the results are going to be not that great. Just do the full tummy tuck. Or you have the person that I had today for a consult who really didn't want to do the scar, didn't really want a big surgery, didn't want to have the full tummy tuck. And so we're just going to do 360 lipo. We're going to lipo her back, her flanks, her abdomen, and then do some Renuvion, some skin tightening of the skin to get it to contract and tighten up. All right, I want to see your reaction to some of these operations. Okay. (laughs) Because I already know what they're going to be. Okay. Floating umbilicus abdominoplasty. Yes or no? If you can find me the one patient that would benefit from it, then yes. I can find you the one. I have one. I do have one. You have one. (laughs) (laughs) No, I have two. I have two. Okay, all right. I have two two floaters. So the that concept is that the there's not enough skin in the upper abdomen because what if what people don't understand with an abdominoplasty, we make a hip to hip incision, we take all the skin off of the abdominal wall muscle, so the skin flap is all the way up to the to the, your sternum, basically, to your mm-hmm. xiphoid process and over the ribs on each side. So that's one big flap that you can imagine as a window shade. We pull it down, cut off the excess, sew it up, and bring the belly button through new skin of the abdomen. Well, sometimes you don't have enough skin above the belly button to make it all the way down, and you're going to have a scar that's like halfway between your belly button and the, and the incision in the low abdomen. Or you could float the umbilicus. You don't make that scar around the belly button. You lift it off the abdominal wall, bring it down, suture it back in place. But there are limits to that because if you make it too low, then you have a belly button like at your at your pubic triangle. Yeah, right which above your incision. It's not cute. No. <laughs> that, so this is for someone is... that has very little skin above the belly button and has like a normal to high riding belly button to start out with. Yes. So it has you, to be high. you can pull it down by a couple centimeters and it doesn't look too wonky and you can relax the skin of the upper abdomen. Um, but like I said, it's not too many people no, that fit not. into that category. Okay. Okay, I have one for you. All if, right. If we're playing this game. Yes. Reverse tummy tuck. (laughs) (laughs) I think of the right patients. No, I I really hate that operation. It's terrible. So reverse tummy tuck. I've seen one good one, though. I did not do it. There's always one. I've seen one one good one. But the scar, it looks like, you know, like when we did trauma, like for the gunshot. Oh, the clamshell? It It looks like a clamshell. Yeah. So what we used to do in trauma in, you know, people talk about ER thoracotomies where you're in the emergency department, guy comes in, shot up, and you got to get in and do cardiac massage to keep them alive. You cut through their chest wall and reach in and start massaging the heart. That's not a plastic surgery operation. Dude, in some a, cases... We're talking about mommy makeovers here. <laughs> I, I know, hang on. Just bear with me. So this patient had this done, and the only thing that I could think of when I saw it was that she had been clamshelled for trauma because yeah. the clamshells, when you cut across the sternum, and open the other side, and you open the chest up like a clamshell, yeah. and then you have access to both lungs, all the great vessels, and the heart. Well, she had a reverse tummy tuck, which looked really good from the, like, don't look at the scar kind of thing. So a reverse tummy tuck is where you put the incisions in the fold of the breasts. Right. So instead of putting it underneath, like from hip bone to hip bone, you put it at the top of the abdomen, right under the breast in the fold, and, pull and you up. pull up. Up. Up, Yeah. So I've seen bad ones in in spades, many, many bad ones. And what happens is the scar stretches, scar drifts, yeah. it drifts lower, it looks like hell. And I don't recommend getting a reverse tummy tuck. And by the way, it doesn't fix the lower part of the tummy, no. which is where a lot of people have extra skin because you can't put an incision at the bottom and the top. I did see one patient recently where I kind of was like, be the one like for whatever reason her lower tummy was super tight she never had shot seven she never had kids that's who really needs that operation (laughs) she never had kids her lower tummy was really tight but she was getting older with time and age she had some loose skin just above her belly button 
and she was asking about the reverse tummy tuck and I basically shot it down but I was like you might be maybe the one but I just again yeah those scars I can't deal with it I'd rather float the belly button or do a mini or something like you that. know and the other thing you can do is you can just put a <laughs> scar halfway between the belly button and the and the incision I've done it's that fine. plenty of times and it's fine yeah it, and the patients don't complain it's not a big deal it's in the lower abdomen it's still usually hidden yeah. within a bikini it can it's a well. small little two three centimeter vertical scar where your old belly button incision was and it's it's really not a big deal because the exchange for that scar is a super flat, super tight abdomen, which is worth, good, my good opinion, trade. having a little two, three centimeter vertical scar in addition to your tummy tuck scar. I want to just take a moment, though, mm. to like have our listeners realize that you and I have clamshelled human beings as part <laughs> of our training to do this stuff. It's really yes. hard. Like we, people forget like I where know. we came from. Like we're you know? actual like real surgeons. Yeah. W- you know, like yeah. when it comes to surgery, like we got game. I know. I know you clamshell. Yeah. Been there and done that. And it has a mortality rate of 99.8%. <laughs> Nobody walked out of that. <laughs> Nobody walks out of the hospital with a clamshell scar. I can tell you that much. Not, not anyone I saw. I will tell you about the one ER thoracotomy that I saw leave the hospital. She did survive. Her and her daughter were driving on a highway in Pennsylvania And a coal truck rolled over on them. Mm. And the daughter was okay, but the mom got clobbered, totally crushed. She was driving. And she had an ER thoracotomy. And I'll never forget it because I was there. I don't know what happened. The the trauma felt like when you do an ER thoracotomy, you think you're going to cut like in the breast fold, right? Like in the fourth, fifth inner space. You're in a trauma situation and you're just trying to get access to the aorta. You don't really think about where you're putting the incision. Well, he didn't. He did not. And he cut flat, like straight Straight across the the breast. breast. (laughs) It was like, I've seen that. It was like, ooh, everybody went, ooh, like that. And sure enough, the one ER thoracotomy that I saw survive had a wailing scar right across her her breast like i've that. seen that exact but same she's thing but she she's alive it. she made it yep you know and of course it was closed in the usual trauma manner with staples yep and uh but she know, walked, out, but of she walked out of the hospital you can't com- you can't argue with those nope. that kind of success not right. at all but that's not what we are doing no <laughs> today with the mommy makeovers so the mommy makeovers you know you can kind of get into the weeds about the various different procedures it's all going to be very tailored to whatever it is you need that's right and what you are looking for and how much you want to commit to any given procedure but sort of by definition of what we're doing which is a combination of procedures it is not going to be a small little cutesy procedure nope. just because it has a cutesy name just because it's called a mommy makeover does not mean that it's a small cutesy procedure this is one of the bigger surgeries we do in plastic surgery it is a lot of time in the operating room it comes with very real risks and potential complications and is certainly not something to be taken lightly cost we always talk about cost it's not cheap. One million dollars. <laughs> I mean, if you think, if people think, because it's one <laughs> procedure, it's a mommy makeover, but they don't always realize that you're doing sometimes two, three, four separate procedures. That if you were to do four separate procedures individually, would cost you a lot of money. It's not that much different when you combine them. There's a little bit of a cost savings because you're combining the first hour of OR anesthesia, but you're still getting three or four separate procedures and it's going to add up and it's not going to be cheap. No, it's usually seven. It takes me about six or seven hours to do these and I I spend a lot of time on it. I want it to look great. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do the breast first and then the abdomen. That's yep. typically the way I do it. And cost can be anywhere and this is in this is 2023 with inflation maybe soon it will yeah. be one million dollars <laughs> but at this point uh it's anywhere in my world and, and i'll just in quota range for california it, it could be anywhere from twenty five thousand dollars up to a hundred thousand dollars yeah i think that is legitimate um the lowest end of the spectrum is going to be twenty twenty Beverly Hills prices, twenty twenty five thousand dollars is the lowest that yeah, you Beverly can, Hills. That this you is Beverly get. Hills. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, I've heard all the way, you know, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars. So it, it you know, find a surgeon, find the one that's in your price range, but just know that whatever it is, it's not certainly gonna be the cheap. The guy the guy's my vintage, um, which are obviously if, uh, a generation older than you, is, are in the seventy to, mm-hmm. to eighty thousand dollar range yeah, for this I would operation. Say 60, for, for real. Sixty, yeah. seventy thousand dollars is legit. My vintage um, more in the 20, 20 to 30. No. Yes. You. No. I know I should charge, I should charge a lot more than I do, but you you know, should. I just, 
You're what? so good at this. I just I want people to be able to have the surgery. Plus, it's a mommy <laughs> doing a mommy makeover. Who better to have empathy than the mommy doing the mommy makeover? I know, I, mean, I know. Come on, what are we talking about here? I just I just want to help the people. I know you do. You're, you're the only one that comes out of there and, and actually costs you money to do the do the that surgery. That has happened before. <laughs> yes. So that's that's the cost. It's not going to be cheap. Um, but the recovery is something to talk about as well. Sure. You know, that's not going to be easy. I do ask my patients, you know, how old is your youngest child? What kind of help do you have at home? Yeah. Because if you have a child that's still, you know, less than two years old, three years old, and you're the only one that's around to help take care of them, that's not going to work. Good luck. Because you, you're not going to be able to lift them up. You're not going to be able to lift them up and put them in their crib, lift them up and put them in their car seat. They either need to be at an age where they can do that on their own or you have someone in your house that can help you do that for at least a couple of weeks, if not the full six weeks, because you are not going to be in a position to be lifting you know, 15, 20, 30 pound children. So you got to figure out your circumstances and what kind of help you have at home. The first week is certainly going to be the roughest you know, in terms of pain, discomfort, how you can position yourself, how you can sleep. But then each week tends to get better. And by, you know, six to eight weeks, you're back to the gym, you're back to your regular life, back to work maybe in three weeks-ish, something like that. Yeah, and I, I agree with those numbers exactly. Uh, and, and it is patient-dependent. I mean, I have some patients just, they just rally and they're, they're good yeah. in two weeks. And I got other ones that want to milk it till they're, <laughs> till you, for the, for, six months if possible so they can get taken yeah. care of the whole time but it just depends just on depends every patient's different everyone's different how much work you do most of my patients you know there's liters of, of fat being removed and lots of liposuction so they're feeling it for a minute yeah for sure yeah. it's real surgery uh but you know the the results are spectacular i have many many happy patients with their mommy makeovers i mean it just changes the shape of their abdomen it makes that it sucks it in and it narrows the mm -hmm. waist and it gets the hips out and it just yeah it gets you that hourglass money. figure gets you a flat abdomen it fixes those compromised muscles it rejuvenates the breast it's it's a solid win i mean these patients are usually super ecstatic and once they've had theirs done then usually their friends come in yep. droves because <laughs> gosh darn it that bitch does not look better than me and we cannot have that <laughs> give me your surgeon's name get out of my way i'm getting it's so true like once one gets in the friend group everyone else tends to follow yeah, you do. You wind up doing like friend groups. Yeah, it's true. Because you know they all want to look. They all want to look good. And so if you can wrap your mind around the scars, wrap your mind around the recovery, get your finances together, your help situation afterwards, it's a win. It's a, it's a great procedure. Absolutely, and I uh, I definitely I definitely see that you are a real master of that operation. Oh, well, I, thank I you. I really love your results. It's. It's uh, fun to watch, and it, the best part is all the gifts your patients bring, <laughs> which I don't see why I don't get those gifts. I don't understand don't, it. Like you're not a mommy doing mommy I makeovers. <laughs> you get like all kinds of gifts. It's amazing. I know. I have really, really great patients. They are. They're, <laughs> I, I may maybe because I'm too expensive and they're out of money. That may be, <laughs> that may be the problem. <laughs> I spent it on yeah. your surgery. Yeah. You, know, you're you welcome. should be giving them gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I give them the gift of their amazing new body. I that mean, is true. But it, it is more expensive. I mean, I, I don't know what that is, but it's it just, uh, I, I see that. It's, it's kind of, and, and all the guys my age, like, we, you know, we don't like call each other and be like, hey, what are you charging for this? Like, it just, like, you come to it. You're like, this is what it takes me to do it. And you yeah. realize as you get further into your practice, you have more experience and you're better at it. And there's, you have more efficiencies and the results are better. You, you, realize it's it's just worth more in your own it's mind worth it's, your what time. I, it's what i think it costs yeah. you know for me to do that I, I your don't time know. becomes more that valuable for sure the longer yeah. you do this i guess um i i, I love doing it and uh, you know i know we're we're both sort of you know surgical mavens we're just totally into it but uh <laughs> you know it's kind of the deal it's kind of the deal and if we're doing your mommy makeover and it's getting long don't be worried all the patient families and friend members out there are still in surgery yes because doing it's, a great job it's gonna take a that's while right. and you're welcome yeah, and you're welcome <laughs> well i think that's it i think we covered it for this mommy makeover 101 why don't you take us out this is the beverly hills plastic surgery podcast coming to you from the 90210